In this video, I wanna show you something that is so important when it comes to emergency preparedness, specifically when it comes to a winter power outage. Now, if you go to your gas furnace, you'll probably see this. It's a simple light switch so that a technician can turn it off quickly and be able to service that, maybe in an emergency or just to do a tune-up on it. Now, the problem comes in when there is an emergency winter power outage you need heat to your home and you can't get power to that furnace. A lot of homes just don't have a means to get power to that furnace because maybe there's not a whole lot of power outages, but it only takes one time for this to become critical. And I wanna show you a simple, super cheap method, something that is totally reversible in case you wanna change it later and it will help you get power to that gas furnace so you can heat your home in the event of an emergency power outage. So let's get right into it. This video is brought to you by FilterBuy, America's number one choice for quality, affordable air filters. Okay, so first off, the only three items that we're gonna need to do this upgrade is one, a regular outlet. This is a 20 amp outlet. We need a cover like this, that is a regular outlet cover. And then we simply need a pigtail like this one that I got from Home Depot. I'll make sure and leave links to all of this in the video description so you can easily purchase it on Amazon and have it shipped right to your door. Okay, so I just wanna make this as clear and concise uh, to understand before we actually get into the project here. So what we're doing is we're gonna be taking this outlet out and of course we're gonna make sure everything um, as far as power is shut down. And we're just gonna be replacing this with a regular outlet. This is a 20 amp outlet. And think of it this way. There's an outlet right here. Just imagine that this gas furnace now will have its own outlet. And then we're just gonna be using this pigtail to attach it to the furnace as if it was a TV or a toaster oven. And we're simply going to plug it into this outlet. Now what's awesome about it is we can unplug it this outlet is completely isolated from the furnace, and then we can plug that pigtail that is never live into a generator. So this will become more clear, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing here. So first of all, we just need to make sure that our electricity is completely off. So let's hop over to the breaker panel and make sure that the breaker is off, and then we'll verify that we don't have any power here. Okay, so we're here at our breaker panel, and as you can see right here, our furnace is this guy right here. So it's gonna be one, two and a half down. So one, two and a half. This is going to be for our furnace. So we're simply gonna turn that guy off and then we'll verify at the furnace that the power is indeed off. So next what we're gonna do is take the cover plate off of our switch here and then we're gonna verify that we don't have any power here. So this is another invaluable tool that I use all the time. This is considered an electrician's hot pin. And basically you can take this and run it anywhere where there's power and you will get an audible beep and this will flash red at the tip. Now, as you can see, there's no power. We're gonna take these screws out and pull it further out and just double check and make sure. Now, some people say you want to check this with a voltmeter, which you can totally do, but I've never had an instance where this read no voltage and it was actually live. So I trust this completely. Something else we can do is simply put this in an outlet, make sure that it's actually working. And then when we come back here to check it, then we know that this tool is working and that there is indeed no power here. All right, so what we'll do next is take our switch out. Just pop these screws out. And we're simply gonna slide our switch out. And this is probably what you'll see, just two black wires connected to the switch. Your neutral will be wire nutted together and then your ground there as well. Now, just for giggles, we can go ahead and check this closer up and just make sure that everything is dead. And what we're gonna do next is just completely disconnect our switch. Um, this is something that I like to do on any outlet or any switch is just wrap the exterior to make sure that this never touches anything. Uh, just a good practice to get into. Okay, so we'll start by removing these. and then we will remove our neutral as well. Okay, so now that we have those off, you can see that these are the three wires that simply power the furnace. There's no power supply that goes to these. This is our grid power. So this comes from the uh, breaker box, from that breaker that we turned off, and this supplies power to the gas furnace. So what we're doing is we're gonna take these and put an outlet here, and then we're simply gonna make this into a pigtail so we can plug it into that. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna pull this through. 
so that nothing from the furnace is gonna come into this box. So we'll open up this front panel and pull these all the way through, and then we'll put our outlet in. Okay, so we're gonna focus on this in a little bit. So we'll just leave these tucked over here. For the time being, we're gonna put our outlet in. This is super basic. So we're just gonna run the neutral wire right here. These have these little tabs, so we can just put it right under it if it's straight. If you want to, you can go ahead and curve these. Just make sure that you curve them to where they follow the rotation of the screw. Don't put it in this way and curve it that way, because when you go to tighten it, that will unwind it. So you wanna make sure that it comes in on the left goes around to the right. So when you tighten it, it just secures that same rotation. And then white is gonna go on one of these silver screws. It doesn't matter which one. You can see there's a little bridge there. And black is always gonna go to the gold side or the bronze side. All right, so those are all done. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're just gonna go under these screws and do a few layers of tape here, just to make sure that nothing bumps against these and causes any sort of short. All right, so there we go. Everything is safe. We're just gonna kind of push these, maneuver them back to where they fit down in this box. Beautiful. Now we can go ahead and throw our cover on and this section will be completely done. Beautiful. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we need a hole that our pigtail is going to travel through and it's not going to rub on any rough metals. So what we're gonna be using is one of these little adapters. You can get these at Home Depot uh, for very cheap, like less than a dollar. Um, so if you already have a knockout like this one, this is a three quarter inch hole, I believe, and a half inch, for whatever reason, these are considered half inch fittings will fit in there. Um, alternatively, what we're going to do is we're just going to use one of these um, taper bits. So we're simply going to punch a hole right here. And what this is going to do is just ensure that that pigtail is not gonna move, it's not gonna vibrate and it's just gonna have a nice steady connection. And then that pigtail will just come out right here and we'll simply plug it in to the outlet. Now, in case you're wondering, this is a demo furnace. So I have a quick connect here so I can easily take this off and put it back on just for making demonstration videos. So we're gonna punch our hole about right here. That's gonna be close to where our wires are inside. And then we'll be able to make our attachment in there. Next, what we're gonna do is take this, unthread it, put it inside there, and then we're going to attach the screw on the back side. Okay, now I'm gonna orient this this way because this outlet is right here. Now I can loosen these with my screwdriver and we'll go ahead and put our uh, pigtail through there. Okay, something else to note is that this pigtail is a 14 gauge wire. This is rated for 15 amps, as you can see. Um, a lot of the older furnaces, like really old, could be a 20 amp furnace, so just keep that in mind. Pretty much all of the newer furnaces are going to be 15 amp, so a 14 gauge pigtail is going to be totally sufficient. Now, one other thing to note is this is a 9 foot um, cord. You can install this, but they advise not to because you can basically make kind of a heat induction loop. So you want to try and keep this as short as possible. Um, what I usually do is make it long enough to where you can plug it into a, a, a power station right next to the furnace. So I don't need all of this length, maybe two feet or so. So we'll just feed this end through here, determine how long we need it, and then we can cut the pigtail. Okay, so this should be plenty of length to plug that into a power station should we need to. So let's go ahead and tighten down these screws and then we'll make our cut. Now this doesn't have to be super tight, just tight enough that it's not gonna be moving around and you can't pull it one way or the other. So just like that, and that's all it takes. Okay, so now for inside here, 
this little cover goes over this box just to make sure that all these connections are nice and covered. So what we're gonna do is take our pigtail uh, right here and we're gonna trim it to length and then we're gonna feed the wires in where these same wires go into the bottom of this box right here. And as you can see, it has a lip to prevent anything from rubbing there. So we'll just take the end of this and not go all the way through, just kind of run it around just a little bit and you should just be able to cut through that insulation. There you go. And you can simply slide that off and you've got your three wires. So we're simply gonna kind of work this and feed these wires through that same hole there. And there we go. Now we can make our connections. Very simple, we're just going to uh, connect black to black, white to white, and green to green. So you can use wire nuts for this part, but we're gonna be using these. These are called Wago lever nuts, and I absolutely love these. So all you do is fold that little snap back, and then once you have your wire in and fully seated right here, you can actually see it making the connection, then you snap it locked, and it will not go anywhere. I've had zero problems out of these. Some people say they get hotter, but there's actually tests that have been done and these have proven themselves time and time again. Now, one thing to note is that you wanna trim these to where the insulation is being covered. So this one is actually a little bit too long. So that's one thing that people make uh, a mistake with is just um, even with outlets and things of that nature, uh, light switches, they leave the wires too long and that can be a potential for a short. So now when we go to put this in, we'll see that it covers the insulation here, just like that, beautiful. So we'll snap that locked and it is golden. I'm yanking on that really hard and it's not moving. So we're gonna go white to white here. We'll probably trim that one back a little bit as well. Black to black and green to green. Now these are made in different orientations. You can get these up to, I think, six uh, ports. Uh, this is a three, I'm just out of the uh, two port ones. So we're just gonna use a three port here. Really handy little devices. I'll make sure and leave a link for the bundle that has a bunch of different styles in it. Um, that's the one that I prefer. All right, so these are completely done. We're just gonna tuck them there and then that box is going to go over this whole assembly. So we'll just simply kind of fish this back in. And there we go. So we'll just put that screw back in and our job is complete. Okay, so now that everything is complete, we're just gonna plug this into our outlet. Now, if you have excess like this, what you can actually do is you can fold it up and kind of coil it like this. And then you can use a little Velcro strap. I got like a 20 pack of these on Amazon for uh, less than 10 bucks. And it just keeps it nice and clean when you're not using it uh, you know, for an emergency. And it just kind of keeps it in place. So let's go ahead and turn on our thermostat and verify that the gas furnace does indeed work. Uh, you'll note that I don't have a vent here. I'm just running this temporarily in an open space. Um, just to confirm that this works. And then we're gonna show you with a power station how you can power this furnace and that it's totally isolated from the grid. So you're not gonna be back feeding any power into the grid. All right, so we've got our breaker turned back on. We're simply gonna bump this into heat mode. And we noticed our inducer just kicked on. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this off just so you can see the flame running. Okay, so our flame just kicked on. Everything is running as it normally would. Fan just came on, so everything is working like it should. Let's go ahead and bump the thermostat back off. So all we have to do to service this or to get power turned off at the unit is simply unplug this. And as you can see, there is no juice. There will never be any juice to this pigtail. It's just simply wired to the furnace. So this is just a normal plain Jane outlet. So let's just imagine there's no power to this um, outlet. There's a power outage. And now we want to plug it into our power station. So we're simply gonna turn on our power station. Make sure that the AC outlets are turned on there. We're gonna undo our little Velcro thing here. 
and then we'll have enough reach to plug this into our outlet. So now as soon as we plug this in, the thermostat will have power again. That's a question that I get asked all the time. If there's an emergency power outage, how do I get power to my thermostat? The reality is this cord goes to the control board down here. And anytime the gas furnace has power, your thermostat will also have power. And this will function just like it always does under normal conditions. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something that's critically important on some furnaces. This doesn't apply to all of them, but it could very well apply to yours. So we're at 70 degrees, we're calling for heat. It says it will get to 70 in 40 minutes, but nothing is happening at the furnace. Uh, we can see we have juice to this outlet. Now this is because this is not a bonded system. So what we need to plug in is a bonding plug. Now all this does is it connects the ground and the neutral wire and it allows this furnace to run in an emergency situation. So check this out. All we do is on one of these additional outlets, we're gonna pl plug in our bonding plug. You can see that green light there. You don't have to get a sophisticated one like this, but as you can see, our inducer just came on. That's all that was needed to run this furnace with this power station. So if you need a bonding plug, I'll make sure and leave this in the video description as well. We see our igniter just came on. And we should have ignition in just a second. ignition or pulling 76 amps just with the inducer uh, this spiked up when the igniter came on and once our blower motor comes on we'll notice this uh, come back up and we'll see how many watts this furnace uses all right there goes the blower motor So we're pulling 234 watts for the blower and the inducer combined. Everything is running. Our fan is blowing. We're spitting out hot air. And of course, this is in an open environment, so we're being safe here. Um, so you can see that works. Everything works. In the event of a power outage, this is critically important. And I highly recommend being prepared. Whatever type of power station you have, will be dependent, um, how, how long you can run it will be dependent on the size of it. And of course, make sure that you get a bonding plug. If you're not sure, you can get these for really cheap. So just make sure and pick one up just in case, and that could save you. Well guys, it's that easy to convert your gas furnace to an outlet with a pigtail. This whole project took about an hour and cost less than $20. I'll make sure and leave a link in the video description for all of these products. And I highly recommend that you take care of this before winter comes and you find yourself in an emergency situation. Now, if you wanna see what the number one most common furnace repair is that any DIYer or homeowner should know how to do, you can find that video right here. I highly recommend that you check it out. And until next time, you guys be safe. Later.